Hi, hi, hi. It's Bev here and welcome to you, well-being lover. It's lovely to be live with you here today on a Friday here in Sydney, Australia. And I'm wondering where you are calling in from or listening in from. And what I wanted to do today was to actually just do some recap and then answer your questions on the first four ways we've been talking about this week about uh, simple ways to live fabulously. And the first one was to drink more water. And you might be asking yourself, well, why do I need to drink more water? And the simple fact is most of my clients who come to me, it's one of the easiest and simplest things to actually improve their um, levels of energy and reduce brain fog. And the reason for that is that our uh, water, it, it, our body are made up of 65 to 70% water and our brain is a higher proportion of that. So when you are not drinking enough water and you're feeling thirsty and dehydrated, your brain itself is not able to function um, as it's intended to. So that's a really good reason, compelling reason why. And another common question that I get is I actually get the question for how much water do I actually need? And there's a simple formula. You take your weight and you multiply it by 0 0.03 and that will give you, so if you're working in pounds or if you're working in um, uh, kilograms, it actually gives you the, the translated value in your water uh, content. So that's an easy way to solve that problem because overhydrating has also problems because if you over drink water you can actually create a state in your body where you deplete yourself of the right uh, minerals uh, that actually help the rest of your body function so it is a, a fine balance but I'd say on average most of us do not drink enough water and you can often tell in the texture of somebody's skin you can actually tell it in the glow in their um, hair and their face and and um, those type of things so just don't wait until you are you know getting thirsty get yourself a jug of water keep it on your desk while you're working and aim to drink it by about three o'clock in the afternoon because you don't want the added problem of waking up and it needs to be filtered water so what we want to do is take as many impurities out of this as we can so I just want to check, um, I'm going to just trying to work on two computers here. I'm trying to check who's live with me, say hello, love to know where you're listening in from. And um, the second one is about practicing cooking. And the reason for this is really simple, is that you can not only control the food that you're eating, you know, so it's what you're eating, it's how much you're eating and also then you know that you actually are taking care of yourself and so a lot of people say well you know what I'm busy well how do I get my cooking down um, pat so what I'd say to you is with the cooking is think about cooking um, once and eating twice so the idea behind that is Let's say, for example, you're cooking for a family of four and what you'd want to do then is to actually cook twice as much as you need for one meal and make sure it's a meal that you can prepare, uh, put in the freezer or keep in the fridge. What I often do is I prepare enough food for two meals at once and often I'll have the next one for lunch. So it just makes it easy with that. The other idea is to plan ahead. So Jody, who's live with me now, I've just worked out how to uh, move people on and see who's live. <laughs> she mentioned about using um, the slow cooker. So planning ahead when you're busy is a really good way to make sure that you are creating you know, the space for yourself to get the right nutrition that you need. So even if it's summer, I often use the slow cooker because it means that I can put everything in one pot and leave it um, to work. So it's planning ahead. 
with my clients, I often work on a two-week menu because then they have a shopping list. So it's all their tasks. So we work out, you know, what are the kinds of things that you need to eat to support your body for health? And then what is it that you want to um, sort of aim for? Are you eating more plant-based? Are you eating a mix of protein? How are you eating? So because everybody's unique and obviously you're wanting to tailor what's suitable for that particular person. And the most important thing is planning ahead. So if you have a two-week menu, you could create your own shopping list and from that shopping list have exactly what you need in the fridge. And then perhaps on a Sunday afternoon, you could actually pre-cut vegetables and other things to make it easy. So, um, for example, if you were making a mixture of salads and uh, maybe stir fries, cut the vegetables appropriate size for stir fries, but actually then allow um, you know the vegetables uh, for salad. You can pre mix some of those, not the soft squishy ones. So yeah, that's that's an idea there. And then we spoke um, the third way to living fabulously was to use ancient whole grains in your in your diet if it's appropriate for you. So it's not appropriate for everybody. But one of the questions that we got was about if you're a plant-based eater and gluten-free and you have uh, bowel health issues, what should you do about that? Now there are four obvious grains that are gluten-free or ancient grains and that's amaranth, quinoa, buckwheat and chia seed although it's sort of a seed it actually that can serve um, as, as a grain and what's important though is the preparation about um, anything like grains nuts and seeds all need to be prepared properly and the reason for that is if you think of them in their wild state they needed to um, preserve the outer shell so that they could therefore uh, propagate and create you know new new a new environment for themselves so they have something called fetic acid in it and fetic acid is what we call an anti-nutrient your body doesn't actually um, absorb it and it affects the digestion of the good nutrients in those grains nuts and seeds so what you do is what we call activating them and by activating them you're actually soaking them and different types of grains beans you know so we talk about beans and peas split peas and so on they need different lengths of soaking and sometimes people suggest that you put um, acidic uh, environment so you could put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in or salt so there's different ways to soak them but each type of grain needs a different level of soaking and the reason you're going to soak it is to also remove any tampering you know so when it's been picked even if it's organic you just want to make sure that you've got no sort of um, unwanted pathogens like salmonella or something like that on your grains and then normally for example with legumes if you're going to soak them I always rinse the water at least twice in the process and then once you've actually done the rinsing process if they were nuts and seeds, you could then dehydrate them or dry them at a very, the very lowest temperature on your oven and in a single layer on a baking sheet. But if you were going to cook them, that's then obviously. So for example, if I'm going to cook quinoa, I will soak it in filtered water. I will rinse it. I will soak it again, rinse it. And sometimes, look, if I'm busy, probably five to ten minutes is what I would do. But the longer you leave it, the better. So if you're planning ahead, you could even soak it overnight. Nuts and seeds definitely need to be soaked overnight. And there's some beans um, and legumes that need to be soaked overnight as well. So just um, the preparation of that is to make them uh, accessible, the nutrients accessible to the body. And then the fourth one that we spoke about was the sweet vegetables in, in moderation. And there's a school of thought that obviously carbs have been getting a really bad rap and often what happens is that people start to cut out 
all good carbs as well. So I'm not talking about processed carbs like uh, pasta or um, you know biscuits, crackers, all of those things. I'm not talking about those type of things. What I'm talking about is actually the sort of whole food. So I'm talking about things like sweet potato, carrots, uh, uh, anything like pumpkin. All of those are starchy carbs, but they're actually really good for you. And to make them even better for um, satisfying your cravings and to actually help gut health, what you would do is to, for example, you can do this with um, sweet potato, and it's also something you could do with brown rice, is let it create what we call resistant starch. So resistant starch actually is what the good gut bacteria in your bowel feed on. And by actually you making, for example, take sweet potato, you would cook it the day before you're going to use it and leave it overnight in the fridge. And what it does then, it creates this resistant starch. And the other good thing about resistant starch, it means that it doesn't break down to sugar in your body. So you're not having the problem of an, a spark of insulin when you're actually eating it. I, do, I have done that actual test myself where I've actually used a glucose meter. And if I just eat sweet potato freshly cooked, I get a different reading to when I actually... So my reading of glucose is much lower when I eat it when it's been cooled and kept in the fridge. So there's an immediate response in the body. So... Um, the body is obviously not overworking with glucose. So there, that's some um, four ways there. So what I'm trying to see is how I get to the comments. If there's any, I can't see any. Oh, goodness gracious me. So never mind. We'll just ignore that for now. There's probably no comments on the views. But if you do have questions, post them underneath. And as we go through the next eight ways to living fabulously, I can either answer them in the next live, which will be in another uh, four days. So it'll be follow next, uh, probably next Wednesday or Thursday, because I'm not obviously posting on the weekends. But um, yes, we'll answer your questions as well. So you can always post your questions under the the um, meme that comes up for the day and I can answer them live for you now and I need to work out how to see your live comments so that's interesting because I'm using my mobile and I can't see it on Facebook so <laughs> technology at its best. So I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, yes have a fabulous weekend and I look forward to seeing you next week. You take care then. Bye.